Hello, welcome back to Gruber Motor Company where we bring Tesla Roadsters back to life. This car came in today. It's uh, bricked, which means that the battery will no longer charge from the Tesla charge port. And um, we were able to get to this car fairly quickly. So one of the first things we do when we get a car like this that has been bricked or is no longer able to charge, before we do a recovery, we hook it up to a laptop and we have special software that tells us the condition of the battery pack and the sheets. The recovery process consists of specialized equipment which we build, which will actually trickle the battery back to a level where the Tesla charge port can take over and start to charge the car again. So in a brick roadster, this charge port door which normally has a white LED ring that illuminates when you open the door will be completely dark because the battery is no longer functioning. What we then do is we can't open this trunk from the inside because the 12 volt system is shut down. We need the key and that will pop the trunk on these Tesla Roadsters. In a Tesla Roadster, the battery is this portion right here all the way to the back of the seats. It weighs about a thousand pounds. It has 6,831 lithium ion vape cigarette cells in it. And just one of those going resistive can kill this car. We have two methods of recovery uh, using two different types of equipment. What we saw over there by that car was some equipment that we built ourselves. And the second way is a Tesla ESS charging system recovery charger. We have two of them here that we're repairing for Tesla currently and uh, rebuilding. And we are testing these currently on this battery pack. So Tesla Roadster battery recovery is actually a procedure that is done at the Tesla service center level along with here at Gruber Motor Company. This piece of equipment is comparable to the Tesla ESS pack recovery chargers. Um, we have an additional item on this particular uh, piece of equipment which is 11 separate power supplies, DC power supplies, which are capable of charging any of these 11 sheets or all of them together. And the reason that becomes important, when we do a battery pull like we're doing here, and we end up having to replace sheets in these packs. A sheet, by the way, is one of these, 621 cells per sheet. Since these packs are aging at this point, the packs or the, um, the battery packs are becoming more sensitive to bricking because they're aging. Some of these packs are 10 years old plus. So when we replace sheets in a ESS pack like this, it's vital that all of the voltages in these sheets are at the same level, within a few hundredths of a volt of each other. That will give us optimum range once it goes back up in the car and we won't have to spend a lot of time bleeding and balancing and charging. So that's what that power supply that we saw earlier with the 11 individual power supplies does for us. We can dial in the voltage we want and it's usually set to the highest voltage in the pack, the highest sheet voltage in the pack. And from there, we current limit and once they all reach the same voltage level, then it's ready to go back up inside the car. And you can see the cavity that is left behind when you take a pack out. And one of our Tesla Roadster engineers here is working with the laptop at this point to carefully monitor the temperature inside the ESS pack as it's charging and uh, monitor the condition of each of the sheets. And at this point, the LCD screen inside the Roadster is indicating that the car is successfully charging from the Tesla charge port door. We don't know where it will top out yet. Once it does, it will go through a recalibration process. 
and all indications currently are from the software and this reading that we have a successful level one roadster recovery and another car back on the road.